the uh, poster that we presented, that was a poster discussion in ASCO 2022, that this year was uh, poster 199. And uh, the trial was a new adjuvant trial of testing out a monoclonal antibody engineered for uh, antibody-dependent cellular cytotoxicity, ADCC, um, against B7H3, which is in the B7 family. It's uh, PDL3. Most people are familiar with PDL1 and PDL2, which bind PD1. B7H3 binds an unknown receptor. The study was in prostate cancer in the new adjuvant setting as a window of opportunity trial prior to prostatectomy for patients who wanted to obtain a prostatectomy. Uh, after diagnosis, uh, it took place for six weeks or six doses for intermediate to high risk men with uh, prostate cancer. Right after diagnosis, we had a Gleason greater than four plus three. The trial was very much enriched for men with high risk to very high risk prostate cancer. About uh, 75% of the trial population was uh, very high risk and about 90% was high risk. And after six weeks of inoblutuzumab, they all the men participating received a prostatectomy as they had pre-selected even before entering the trial. We then followed them for up to three years. And the trial's main two endpoints were safety. This was a first in prostate trial and also for preliminary signs of activity as read out by a PSA zero or PSA non-recurrence one year after prostatectomy. There were also secondary pre-planned endpoints looking at things like PSA decrease from the time of screening to the time of prostatectomy, which should only be normally going up, but if there was an impact of the drug, there should be potentially an inflection of the curve. Uh, to look at, because there was no hormone therapy or ADT, treatment to look at the glandular structure at biopsy and a prostatectomy to see if there was any Gleason changes or um, declines in uh, overall burden of prostate cancer, so complete response, et cetera, which wasn't actually expected in a six-week period. And what we presented uh, was that the overall safety was quite um, benign. There were four patients who had grade three toxicities. There were no grade four toxicities. All the toxicities were treatable and there were no delays to uh, prostatectomy time. There were no uh, surgical outcomes that were different from expectations. And there were preliminary signs of activity as well, which was that we saw that the PSA zero was uh, 66% in terms of 66% of men did not have a PSA recurrence at one year, despite being a very high risk population group. We also saw that the PSA from the time of screening to the time of prostatectomy uh, in a number of patients declined for up to 30%. We saw some patients had Gleason downgrades, which we're still trying to understand exactly what that means biologically, because no other new adjuvant prostate trials have really in-depth in investigated that phenomenon, because most of them require ADT, which prevented that endpoint from ever being utilized. And furthermore, we observed that there were significant immune infiltrate differences from biopsy to prostatectomy, including uh, sequencing the TCRs in the blood and in the tumor showed that there were an increase of T cell receptors in the blood of patients who post treatment compared to before treatment. So uh, at prostatectomy compared to screening. And also that uh, in some of the patients who had non-recurrence, those were the same patients who also had all of their clones that were seen for T cell receptors in the periphery were also being seen in the tumor microenvironment, which indicates potentially that the immune response is playing a role in the observed activity signals and, of course, oh, the immune infiltrate that we're observing increasing from screening to prostatectomy might be playing a role in everything else that we're seeing. Overall, we were very 
surprised, I would say, by the fact that the data was really as clean as it was in terms of the safety profile and, of course, of the preliminary signals of activity. I would say, and I would caution that just as we presented at ASCO, this is very preliminary data. The trial was 32 men. It was non-randomized. It was non-blinded. And so this is giving us a snapshot into potentially a new immune checkpoint or immune target. We don't yet know exactly what um, B7H3 functionally is. And given the way that uh, the ADCC structure of the antibody was engineered, we, and we don't know the receptor, so we don't know that B73 is a true checkpoint. We just know that based on the immunoengineering of the antibody used in the trial, there was an immune response. There seems to be some activity and it's relatively safe. So those are responses and all the data we have indicates that for prostate cancer, B7H3 targeted therapy with anobolutuzumab might be a promising new venue of research and clinical work. We are in active discussions um, to try to figure out what is the best way to really build on the preliminary data. And it will probably be a larger version of a neoadjuvant trial. We'll have to make sure that we account for the fact that going forward, we will need to have a randomized control arm. It will also mean that we will have to make sure that we have the statistical power to really account for the promising results that we have now seen in a very preliminary setting. And all of those discussions, all of those plans are already in motion. And we hope to roll out a new study in the near future, which will really encompass uh, all of the things that I just mentioned.